Welcome to day four of the Great Western Adventure. I have to say today was one of the better days of the trip. The morning started out at the Lincoln KOA, got on the Kansas State Turnpike, went the 15 miles to the west, and got off just on the east side of Topeka. Instead of going directly into Topeka, we kind of backtracked a little bit to the east, roughly the town of Tecumseh, which is a very small place. Park they have, it's really nice. Playground. The nice thing also was that they had plush toilets that were open. But eventually, we came in on, I believe it was Fifth Street, which is the actual Oregon Trail. Through there's absolutely no sign of it. Uh, essentially, what it is is from the eastern point of Tecumseh, it falls a ridge, drops down, and then there's a stream that flows into the Kansas River to the east, and the Oregon Trail follows that for a little while. One of the big places we went to was a local high school, which featured in the uh, major civil rights case of Brown versus the Board of Education. This normally has many, many visitors. However, when we were there, we were like the only like the second or third car in the parking lot. The building was the high school itself, which is also a museum, and it, it was closed due to that, but. Guaranteed that you come maybe next year in 2021 or 2023, it'll be open then. And it's really worth it. We're sorry we weren't able to get in. From there, my partner wanted a picture of the state capitol, a pretty good-sized capitol. Uh, it's imposing, let me put it that way. Uh, I was able to pull off and let my partner get out of the car and take a really nice picture of the, of the state capitol building. And then we were on our way again. There are several other sites, a little bit of the history of Topeka, but we really didn't have time for this. From here, the Oregon Trail crosses the Kansas River to the north grand overland railroad station of Topeka, Kansas. The actual crossing is between the two highway bridges. Now, because of flood control, any trace of where the actual crossing of the river was is long gone. Unfortunately for us also was that the overland station is the subject of a major redevelopment project and they had fenced off so we couldn't even get anywhere near it. One of those really close things that almost got ahead was we were winding around a little bit on the north shore of the Kansas River trying to get back onto the, the Oregon Trail route we hit a railroad crossing, and I was like one minute late just after the locomotives passed in front of us, which kind of ruined the, sh the, the shot slash video of this train. It just wasn't worth it, but ah, so close. Well, I, I knew we were going to have more opportunities, but it would have been I have to say, it would have been a great video if I had been there just a few minutes earlier. But that's how things go sometimes. From there, I stayed on the the local roads, which were much closer to the routing of the Oregon Trail, as the trail kind of bends in and around of the Kansas River. We ran out of local roads, so we had to join in with the, the U.S. highway, which isn't bad because we're really on planes still, so 
the there are no ruts anywhere around here. It, it's just open farmland. So the Oregon Trail back then would have been one, two, three miles wide. Passed through several small towns. One of them we stopped in was St. Mary's. Because it has several historic sites, plus a, a pretty good sized museum. Now, I was 99% sure that the museum was closed. Museum and the historic site is the Indian Pay Station, which wasn't something I kind of recognized as what it was until we actually figured uh, we had a little bit of time to look around. The Indian pay station was actually set up, pay the Indians their monthly or yearly fee for the usage and confiscation of their land. So every so often, if you own land as a Native American, you would come up here and they would give you a set amount of money for, for your land. Now, bear in mind, this is 2020 and again, lockdown. Uh, I really expected to just, okay, we're just gonna pull in and take a little look. We're gonna read the, the placard historical sign that's outside and maybe get a picture uh, or video of us with the buildings in the background. And that was how it was going until one of the directors of the museum saw us and we started, we got into a conversation and oh my gosh, big, great, beautiful surprise. He gave us a personal tour of the museum. Now, I thought the museum was going to be this three-room thing, and that's it, because that's kind of a lot what a lot of pioneer museums are. What I didn't realize, it was like four big buildings. There was a dedicated to the progression of St. Mary's from its original settlement to being a pioneer town to a rural community to the present day. It was chock full of artifacts and historic things that I rarely have ever seen. I mean, I'm used to museums, world museums, they'll have some pitchforks, some saws, maybe two or three farm wagons and some farm women's dresses. And that's usually about it. This was much more complete. For example, it had the complete office of a dentistry of the 1930s. It had exhibits from the various churches of the last hundred years, both the Catholic, the Protestant, and the Jewish face here. They also had quite the exhibit on World War I and World War II featuring both uniforms, paraphernalia related to the war, including medals, up to even to the 1960s and 70s. And I was like, wow, this is great. Thank you for the tour. You know, he spent 20, 30 minutes of him walking us through every single exhibit. But he said, wait a second. You haven't seen the rest of it. I was like, huh? Okay. <laughs> Let's go see the rest of it. And the second building we toured was of the original Indian pay station and furnished accordingly. This is more kind of standard of what I think of and expect from a historical pioneer or frontier museum. But it was interesting because it was a Indian pay station is not something 
that is common. In fact, it's the only one I've ever seen or heard of in all of my travels across America. You got done with that? And he said, wait a second. I, I, I know you, uh, uh, you've been here a while, and but I really want to show you this third building. And it's like, okay. And there was this, I'm going to get this wrong. I, I know it, but there was like a 1956 Buick Skylark in light blue in perfect condition. Oh, such a beautiful car. They also had a fire truck in <laughs> this thing. And it also had farm equipment in that had been, uh, which they had lovingly restored. And, but the nice thing is it just wasn't, okay, this is a farm wagon, there's an off farm wagon. This is another piece of equipment. And you just go, okay, great, wonderful. What the heck is it? Uh, the thing was, is between the interpreter sides and our fantastic tour guy, which, thank you, thank you, thank you. If you're watching this video, I, I really, do appreciate everything you did for us. It, it just was, it was just amazing. So I did leave them a sizable donation. Uh, I think they were asking like $5 a person. I, I threw in like 20 or $30 for each of us because I just, he really went out of his way. And the museum was, you know, closed because of the lockdown. Uh, and he did all of this for us. So this is going to be my plug or my advert here is, Please, if you're in the area, come visit this place. Uh, also, if you're doing traveling through rural America this next several years, please give donations. Give willingly and give till it hurts because they rely on donations just to keep the lights on. Uh, that they don't just shut down and say, I'm sorry, we're just going to have to sell everything and you can't see anymore because we can't even pay the taxes on the land. From St. Mary's, we got back in the car uh, and continued to follow the Oregon Trail as it uh, from Topeka, Kansas. It mostly goes in a west northwest direction. At a certain point, we kind of bared off from the Oregon Trail following the railroad, which also parallels the Oregon Trail through here. I was really hoping to see a train or two, but we followed that into the town of 5,000, which is really not Omega. It's actually the land of Oz. We check out the video on the Oz I shot. Fantastic. They got off the, the Wizard of Oz, it was it was based on Kansas, and the prayer is exactly that. And they have a fantastic Oz Museum and Oz other functions. Plus, in town, there's the the house that landed on the Wicked Witch of the East with the shoes and the feet sticking out from underneath the house. Also, there's a great barbecue place here, too. Oh, the barbecue. I'm sorry. The barbecue was excellent. From there, we headed north on the road to Oz, except for us. It was the road from Oz. Stopped in the small town of Westmoreland to check out their Oregon Trail RV park and some of their Oregon Trail exhibits that are located along the highway. This too has a camping video on this and Potawatomi, which we passed by about 10 miles north. And from there, we were going to go to Alcove Spring, a major stopping point for pioneers on the Oregon Trail. But we were not able to find it because the road signs to actually get to the site were either small or non-existent. Now, I have to admit, there's 
is that green that pull out, which has about three giant blue Kansas State historical panels that tell the history of Alcove Spring and roughly where it was. We got really close. We were within a mile or two. But as it was getting late, we really needed to not, we could not just take an hour or two and circle back. And from there, we kind of drifted downhill. There are several crossings of the Blue River in here. One was kind of near Alco Spring. The other one was nearer to Marysville. By this time, it was about four or five o'clock. So we really had to make a decision on where we're going to end up. And I decided we were going to end up at Fairbury, Nebraska, which was only about another 50 miles or so. I knew it was good size, so I knew that we wouldn't have to worry about eating or such. And I knew about the campground, too. From Marysville, the trail kind of wanders across farmland and we were doing pretty good except i'll tell you what even with the maps i had it was still a little, little bit out to follow uh, even with gps at one point we literally drove down this one road and it literally dead ended at this farmer's house and it was like oops uh Actually, and the farmer was there, so we actually, I just had to say, uh, it was like, my wife saw him, saw him first, uh, but it was like, all right, what the heck, let me go ask him, because I want to be at a point two or three miles to the west of here, but I can't figure out how to get there, and I'm not quite sure where I am, and he was very kind and nice, and uh, he showed us how to get to, I believe the town was Highland, and then on the other side of the island, you cross the river, and there was a, a nice road that took us up to Steel City, which, oh, man, there was a nice bar and maybe restaurant. And it was, you know, if we had maybe a little more time, it looked really interesting. So if you're in Steel City, check out the bar. Tell me what you think. But from there, we got on to... I believe it was Nebraska State Highway 9, and we took that to Fairbury. We got just as it was getting dark. I mean, as in dark, dark, as in we were in the end of the twilight. Fairbury, the town, like a lot of towns in the West, aren't actually exactly on the highway. They're actually usually half a mile or even up to two miles away from the highway. That was the case for uh, Fairbury because we literally had to go down this street through 15 blocks of residential before we got to the business district. We got to the business district and found like a, there was like one Tex-Mex place open and I said, hey, I asked one, somebody else, hey, hey, is there anything that's kind of just a normal American cafe? He said, yeah, I'll just kind of go around here. Well, we did. And we found out we were like 20 minutes after the, they had locked the doors. Mm. Uh, by the way, if you're in the West, try to eat before 7. Well, I know in the city, it's like, hey, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, no problem. Rural, no, everything shuts down at 7 o'clock. And Sundays, sometimes they're awfully closed. We asked somebody else, and they told us that there was a McDonald's and a supermarket and a uh, and a Walmart too out here. Not quite sure exactly where we were going, as in north, south, west, east. But the directions were good enough, and we managed to make it to the McDonald's. And again, the lockdown, uh, we couldn't eat inside. I have to admit the staff there was really nice. They helped us out. We got the food. It was actually a relatively warm night, which was pretty darn good for early September. Then we, we headed around for the night. And that's where I'm going to end it for 
go there because there is a video strictly on the campground. See you tomorrow on day five. Do so. Good night and pleasant streams and stay healthy.